Uh, Brum wants us to get to Deion Sanders as uh, Deion was talking with the media the other day on the Rich Eisen show, and he was going through his blueprint for recruiting, right? And, of course, uh, right now in Buffalo, and it's a little less than two months, that Colorado class is up to number 21 in the 23 rank, which is kind of crazy. The number four transfer portal class, he's brought in 44 new guys. And he goes on to talk about how they have a blueprint. Right. He says for quarterbacks, we want smart, tough, fast, discipline, we care. Quarterbacks are different. We want mother, father, dual parents. We want that kid to be a 3.5 plus GPA. He's got to be smart. Can't make bad decisions off the field. He has to be a leader of men. There's so many different attributes of what we look for. We would love a coach's son. That's what we look for in quarterbacks. And then interestingly, he gets an offensive defensive lineman. He says two completely different standards for the groups for offensive linemen. Quote, uh, we look for dual parent homes and a strong father that they'd adhere to. They also need to be smart, have a 3-3 GPA or higher, be tough and physical. Defensive line, totally the opposite. Single mother on free lunch, and he's just trying to make it. He's trying to rescue mama. I want him to just go get it. We know what, and we go get it. Now, it's interesting because these are very – um and I, and I don't want to be – look, I don't want to be pigeonholed as like the if you can't handle the truth guy. But this is – when you see those lines about dual parents and single parents, that is something that um, I think many people could construe as offensive, right? Because if I'm like a quarterback and I come from a single parent home, I'm reading that and I'm kind of like, what the fuck, man? Like, what you know, like I didn't do anything. Like I'm just out here trying to make it and now you're going to like ding me? Um, that said – I think that Dion is talking about the thoughts and evaluations that like they're, this is not pulled out of thin air. This is a lot of accepted kind of uh, football school of thought and analytics. And although it is not, um, I guess, I don't know. I guess I've, I've, I've kind of seen a lot of this even firsthand in terms of these archetypes who are most successful at these positions. And it's not to say that it's 100% of the time because there are absolutely exceptions to every rule. Yes. But what was your reaction to Dion um, uh, kind of laying it out this explicitly? My reaction to Dion was, Dion, you're not at Alabama. You're not at Georgia. You're not at USC. You take every damn player you can get that has a four star next to his name. I don't care if he has one parent, two parents, mom and our brother and sister raised him, was in an orphanage. If he can play football and he's pretty damn good, you are not in a position to be picky. If you get to be the big boys and you're winning championships and everyone under the sun wants, like, yes, he's done a good job recruiting, but he's still not a top five recruiter. He's still not recruiting four and five star guys left and right in, in a top five, top 10 class. Like he's working his way there. You are not right now in a position to sit down and say, you know what? You're a four star kid, but you don't meet my criteria. I'd rather take this three star kid. Maybe not as athletic, maybe not as big, mm -hmm. but he comes from this. And this is my main criteria. No, 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 no. Yeah. You take ball players right now. And when you get to a level we have so many kids wanting to go to Colorado or if you take another job somewhere else and you have between two guys, then that's when maybe that criteria can come into play. I got two quarterbacks. I'm looking at them. I love both of them. They're both 6'3", 210, can run, can throw. I don't really know which one I want to offer. This kid has two parents, 3.5 GPA. This kid doesn't. Had some issues in the classroom. I'm going to go with the kid that, that, you know, number, you know, my, my, my plan A, here you go. Here's your offer. Then you can do that. But right now, once again, Dion, you need athletes. We were laughing our asses off T Bob and I, when we, we, we saw the video of the first team meeting with Colorado and we, yeah, we're was, used to seeing that. SEC it locker rooms. Good. We're used to yeah. seeing, I and you looked at that, that, that group of young men and you're like, there's no way that team is ready to compete. No. So it sounds good in theory. But three, four years on the line, when you're winning 10 games and you have a top five class every year, you can start getting a little bit picky with who you want to get. So uh, now to be clear, like we don't know, like I, I don't, can I in jump my in opinion, here? Yeah, yeah. What you got? Aaron, that was sure. a spectacular take. Thank you. Uh, now, okay, okay. I loved it. And it, I thought, I think that, I think that's like the most interesting thing I've heard on this subject of like, hey, Dion, beggars can't be choosers. 
Like, well, yeah, well, yes. well, but, 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 but here, but here's my counterpoint though. Dion ain't begging. Like Dion's getting who he wants to get. Oh, he is. And Dion never told you he's saying no to the five star. I think it's more of the situation that you brought up where if two guys are relatively equal, they're going to use these kind yeah. of fringe elements to be like, okay, where do we throw our lot in? And look, that's the ugly part about this shit. And regardless if it's honest or not, like that's the part that I hate is that you could have two quarterbacks that are viewed as being relatively equal. And yet one of them will get an opportunity that the other does not simply because they were dealt a better uh, card of yeah. hands for, for life. Right. But let's not, okay. Like let's not be dumb. Dion's not taking the three star um, guy from the, the middle class over like some five star quarterback athlete, like 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 what that that maybe came from a, a harder upbringing, like yeah. no no no, he's not saying that. He's just talking about the kind of parameters from which they try to um, solve some of these tough decisions. But also, yeah, I, I don't know that I don't I, like I don't know that I agree that Dion is is begging. Who said it in the chat? Uh, I have to go back and find it. Uh, Slip is dead. Said Dion can say what he wants, and players are going to come. I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, I think, I think, I think Dion's going to get who he wants. But he's so, still not recruiting no. a top five class. He's not. It's it's not top five. It's not top ten. It's not top fifteen. It's top twenty five, which is great. Graded it's on awesome. a curve, it is, in my opinion. Graded on a curve, yes. doing what he did but, at Colorado. He needs, he it needs is a two top or five three class. of those classes. He needs two or three of those classes before we start feeling really good about the direction of Colorado. Because right now. Let's be honest, those five star kids or four star kids, whoever he got to come to Colorado, they're used to winning. They're used to playing elite football. If you go to Colorado year one and say NIL, because Dion's, you know, he said it like, I'll, 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 well, we'll find money for you, but we'll really see what kind of money comes into your, to Colorado when it comes to NIL opportunities for these kids. You go to Colorado year one, you're not making a lot of NIL money, you're four and eight. Because, I mean, let's be realistic. Like, this is still a team that is, has a lot of growth to, to happen. Like, they're going to be fighting to make a bowl game. Those kids can easily just pick up and leave and go somewhere else and just say, you know what? It was cool. I had fun. The Dion effect was great for a year. But I want to go get paid. I want to go to Alabama. I want to go get money. I want to go win championships. I want to go play in the SEC. They just got Texas and Oklahoma. Like, it's a pretty badass conference. So, until you have three or four years of successful recruiting and you build up that base on your football team, you are not in a position, in my belief, to be as nitpicky as what he seems to be. Once again, like I get, get yes, if you're right. I don't think he's, yeah. If you know two kids are ready to commit to you today and you're pick, picking between the two, then yes, you can go to the finer details. But that that is, I, I just don't know if they're there yet, though. Uh, here's the deal with Colorado, though, bruh. Uh, I mean, it's very soon going to be a very attractive place to go play. It's in a state whose economy is so robust that I know, I don't know if this is still the case, but I know like a few years ago after they legalized marijuana that they actually had to give money back to their taxpayers because the, the, the tax revenues collected off of weed sales were, were so impactful. You're talking about one They're of They're also in a conference that's about to die. Well, but- here in the short term, that does not work against Dion. It makes the road to the playoff and getting on that elite stage that much easier, right? Sure, he's going to, I mean, well, no, he's not even going to have to overcome USC. He's going to have to overcome o o Oregon. Certainly Washington looks like they're ready to be relevant yeah. and consistent again. But, I mean, when did Dion take over Jackson State? 2020, right, I believe? Yeah. Um, right, he went there in 2020. So 2019... Jack State was four and eight, then four and three, then eleven and two, then twelve and one. Uh, only losing. The big difference, though, the final is game of the you get some four and five stars at Jackson State. That is a major jump to competition. You get a couple four or five stars to Colorado. That's no different than what Oregon has already been doing. What Washington's already been doing. There isn't like a major talent gap that you saw at Jackson State because you brought in five five stars or five four stars. Let's see. Where are these two four seven team rankings? Um, because I would be. I mean, I get what you're saying, uh, but I would. So Oregon finished eighth here, right? And Colorado, where are they? Okay, Colorado's on thirty at two four seven. 
I would feel a bit on notice if I was a Pac-12 team and I watched Dion put together, you know, arguably a top 25 class in the fourth best transfer portal ranking coming off of a 1-11 and season in a place that people do not traditionally think about football. Like, I think that the level of excitement that he brings, especially in the NIL era, if turnaround starts to happen this year, NIL investment, like I said, a thriving economy, I think NIL investment will follow. Like, I think you'll be able to go to Colorado and get paid like you would at some of these other schools. So I'm, I am incredibly I, bullish I, I, on Dion uh, long-term here in the Pac-12. I am too. Like I'm very bullish on Dion. I think Dion. You know, I've been high on Dion. I I love the hire. Yeah. I think it's great. I just don't think he should be so picky with his recruits. I'm more concerned long term with you talk about the 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 appeal of Colorado. The Pac-12 is they're 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 like flying almost. It seems like right now is Apple TV. But they're like, locked into the Ted playoff. Lasso's That's there. the thing. They're locked into the playoff. though. like they're not losing that but automatic 13, bid anytime. Too. 12, 12 games out. Twelve games. You can be on Apple TV. You're going to have to tell mom and dad to go buy a subscription to Apple TV so they can watch their son play football. Uh -huh.